Hello boys and girls, part 2 is here of the Terraflex 3 inch lift kit on the 2020 Jeep Rubicon JLU For those who have been watching the Magnuson Supercharger install series uh, For some reason I thought it was a 19 but it's, it is a 2020 So in this video I actually finalized the whole process front and rear So make sure you subscribe, like, comment there is more stuff coming for the Jeep. Almost forgot. Well, I did forget, but then I remembered. This bracket for this bar here. Now, a hole needs to be drilled, so I'm going to actually install this. These go on the outside. This is kind of a tight fit. Okay, this one goes on the inside. All right, there you go, much better. I'm going to use this bolt here to make sure it's lined up. Now I'm going to make a mark for the holes that I got to drill. I got to drill two, one here on the side and one up top here. this bracket installed I'm gonna rest this bar here on this another bar both sway bar links are installed let's get back to bring the two together Okay, so I cannot go any lower because the front is lifting on the jack stands. You can see it's off the lift in the front. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tighten up the bracket, not the control arms because those still have to move up and down. So I'm going to do the control arms, the shocks. This bar is it's almost there, maybe I can stretch it enough with a screwdriver to Put a bolt through it, tighten up the sway bar links up top, the bottom is tight. And I got ways on this upper control arm, about an inch, over an inch. Okay. Okay, now you saw what happened. This whole axle tilted forward, so I put a, a pry bar, essentially right here and uh, I could raise it up by hand but then I would need another person to drive the bolts in <clears throat> obviously I couldn't do it by myself so I just used a, a jack just to tilt it back to its position and this bolt here and the two on the upper control arms went in with no issues so now it's safe to bring it down Okay, now what I'm going to do, since the front of the Jeep is off the jack, it's as if it was on wheels, so it is safe to tighten everything up. Now that everything is tight, there's one thing left, which is the 
brake line uh, brackets. I want to raise it up. All right, brake line bracket update. One word, ridiculous, stupid, and could be a for a different model. Anyways, so this is by instructions, more or less, passenger side. I did have to, the instructions say, uh, remove, get rid of these two brackets. And the difficult part is prying open these guys here. I mean, this is especially this one here, this uh, lack of words, man. I mean, you gotta use, you know, I'll show you the different tools I've used to get these open. But in my opinion, if you're doing a 19 Jeep, do not remove this bracket. Just leave it alone. Only re remove this one and get rid of it. And you won't be using this. So this is according to the instructions here. This bracket, one was here. You can see how I mounted the um, uh, speed sensor wire here. Okay, now the axle is all the way down. It's stretched all the way down. You can see it's no longer on jack stands. And there's plenty of slack on all of these lines. Now this will move with the axle, obviously. Only this is the concern. So there's plenty of slack here. I put zip ties on this um, provided bracket. And it attaches to the bottom shock bolt here. So this is okay. It's just, you don't need to do this. Now this is the driver's side. As you can see, this bracket was untouched. And, you know, you're not gaining much slack by removing this bracket. So you have, I have another more or less the same slack on the other side. But this again, this moves. This whole part is stationary. You know, these, these, these will not get stretched. Uh, when you turn the wheels, they will, but, you know, not uh, going up and down. Anyways, all I did here, I removed this bracket and I removed the pushpin here for the breather hose, for the front diff, because it was getting stretched. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Now, I was looking at different options to attach this, this um, uh, rubber bracket here either here or to the shock bolt but as you can see I would have to remove this bracket and that's a no-no if I were to put it here if this was the other way you know uh, long ways like this then yeah I would install this, this bracket for extra protection or whatever but it's not it's like that so this is not going on all right now the rear First, I'm going to support it the same way as I did in the front by supporting the, the bottom uh, bracket for the shock. Same here, on, same as on the driver's side. All right, axle supported. I removed the muffler because I'm going to be installing a new exhaust anyway, so might as well. I'm not going to bang my head over it. All right, I'm going to start with removing, I think it's a 13 mil bolt right here, and that removes the bracket that, that holds the emergency brake lines these two guys here and what needs to happen is we need to reroute these both of these under the fuel line uh, here basically all these guys here are gonna go down under the cross member and these lines so the way to do this remove that bracket then apply the e-brake these will pull towards you and then you use vice grips to there that's better then you use once these are pulled out you know emergency brakes uh, applied then you take vice grips and you just pinch this this part and then release the e-brake and this will be much easier to remove do not remove the vice grips remove these lines then you reroute them then you simply put them back and then remove the vice grips on both sides so that's what I'm going to do right now and I'm going to show you the result okay this wasn't bad at all so this is what it should look like I actually used hose clamps to 
squeeze this and remove it, but you do this after you remove the parking brake lines from here. This is what I used. So yeah, this was easy. Now it's time to loosen up all the control arms, upper and lower. Got two bolts on each and this one here. So it looks like uh, 21. This one here is actually hidden inside the frame. So just loosen these up, do not remove. Okay, once you loosen up both control arms, it's time to remove the brake line bracket, which is this bolt here, and that looks like a 13. Just remove it, both sides obviously, and leave it loose, and remove both sway bar links. Two bolts, one on top and one on the bottom. Now if you have trouble, if they start to spin, if you're gonna go remove this, with a, I would just do it with a gun, it's a good chance they're just gonna come off. But if they spin, if that little bulge inside the sway bar link starts to spin, you wanna use an Allen key here and hold it and use a wrench to remove the nut. The bottom one doesn't have it, it's held down with a bolt and a nut. Okay, next is removing shocks and the, the rear track bar. I'm gonna remove this plastic. Here it's only three 8mm bolts, just so I have access to this 18mm. Looks like an 18mm for the bottom bolt as well. And looking from the rear, remove this bolt altogether so this track bar can actually come out. This looks like a 21. Forgot to mention also loosen up the 21 on the right side of the track bar. Once you got that done, bring it up and rest it up on top and remove these look like 15s I'm guessing. Remove the sway bar uh, altogether because you're going to be installing these spacers. All right, after removing the sway bar and loosening up that track bar bolt, this bracket here, slide it on. Make sure it's all the way in. You may want to slip a bolt through it. Here, just make sure it's nice and flush here. It's all the way down. And what you want to do, you want to mark these holes. There's gonna be some drilling going on. Yeah, looks looks like just two half inch holes. Then take that off. And remember to always use a punch. So you're once you start drilling, you are in the center. More or less. So always use a punch. Start with a small bit. I usually go through three or four sizes until I get to my size, which is going to be half inch in this case. Okay, once you get these holes drilled, I actually, I got them started from the outside, but I had to finish drilling on the inside because the drill and the bit was too long and it would hit the drill would hit the caliper. So this is the set right here. This is all this, all the hardware you need to install this bracket. And I'm going to be using the lower, the lower hole for up to three inches application. We are, remember I showed you the spacers, uh, there is a, a two inch, a half inch and a half inch, so that makes it three. 
So anything above three inches uh, lift, you use the top hole. Three inches and down, you use the bottom one. So this bolt, it's gonna go in here later. So now it's time to, in my case, raise the Jeep so we can remove the springs. Okay, hopefully this is enough. Plenty. I'm going to be reusing all these. So these springs are actually marked for rear right and rear left. They both have tags, so this one's rear left. Left is always driver's side. Now there's a special spot where the end of the spring actually sits. So let's see if we have to raise it up more since this one, this new spring is longer. Okay, I've just noticed this little nipple here probably goes in one spot somewhere. Okay, there we go. So just pay attention. Okay, I'm going to raise it up some more. Before I do, I'm going to remove these lines. This is getting close. Or harness, I should say. And this guy here too. Well, this one actually has quite a bit of slack. They glue that fucking clamp to the hose. Yeah, there's actually glue on the... I don't know why would you do that. Okay, so now it's good to raise it up some more. Remember that nipple? There is actually a hole for it. Deal with those nipples later. This one longer, this one might be longer. Let's raise it some more. Look at this jack and it's almost ready to drop. So I won't be raising it anymore. This is gonna be a challenge. I would love to have someone on the lift, on the controls now, and lower it for me. Or have it on remote, that'd be nice. I'm going to lower it a little bit just to get it uh, more or less in the right spot and then install the bump stops. The axle is straight, so this one, is, this spring is definitely longer, so let's deal with this one first. Okay. Okay, you can actually reach up on top and see where that uh, rubber cushion is and it seems like and you can actually feel the nipple too okay now time for the driver's side nipple okay I need to bring it lower much easier on the driver's side for some reason okay I'm gonna leave it like that and take care of the of the bump stops. First this metal plate and you want to install these on the inside see it's got four holes basically but you either you want to install it on these two okay so there's two on the Jeep on the axle and you're going so the empty ones go to the outside of the of the Jeep the bolts need to point down You'll see in a minute why. So the Allen is a 6 mil, the nut is a 14. This is why, because the, underneath the each plate, you got space for the bolt. So I'm going to stack these up. That's half inch, half inch, that's one, and this is two. Line these up, 
This part actually has threads in it, in these holes here. So you want to slip that in, install this funky washer in there, and from the bottom into that bracket you just slipped in. And this is a an eight. And that is it for the bump stops. Time for the shocks. This cover, make sure this faces front of the Jeep. These Allen bolts apply blue thread locker on these, which is provided. So using the same bolts, start from the top first. Okay, I'm gonna tighten everything up, mess around with the height of the Jeep and reinstall this track bar. I need probably half an inch or so and uh, finish up. Oh yeah, then we're gonna work on the sway bar. Okay, so I had a, a little bit of trouble aligning the track bar with the ho bottom hole here. So what I did, if this happens to you, basically I had to bring the two closer together. I took a flat screwdriver, imagine this bolt not being there, I was able to grab onto the track bar and stretch it. Then I took a, a long, a deep socket 9mm and I put it from behind and I actually went in all the way almost, halfway, and this would lock in the track bar in place then I was able to, because of the spring, I could not do anything else. I could not put a screwdriver. It had to be the socket because of the spring. There was no, no room. Then I was able to drive this bolt in while this socket was still in there. Then I kind of knocked it in and this bolt pushed out the 9mm. So that's tight. Let's take care of the sway bar. So before you start with the sway bar, use they want you to use blue thread locker on these new sway bar bolts so a line like this is fine or two lines on each side get two of them ready spacer logo outside i really don't think it matter well it kind of does now that i look at it this hole is slightly bigger can you see that in this one so logo on the outside these look like our 15s All right, boys and girls, rear lift kit install is nearly done. One less thing to do, and I'm going to go back to the front as well. Oh yeah, just remember to the sway bar links, they go on the outside. And this bolt here for the shock, the shock bolts, I installed them from the inside out. Figured this will be protected by the rim and, you know, in case you catch something here and this the head of the bolt gets hit you most likely will still be able to take it out from here with probably no issues instead of if you were if this was the other way around and you would damage the threads yeah so you would, you would probably have to cut this off to remove the shock this way i'd say it's safer so when i say it's nearly done is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna lower it down only on jack stands the front, the rear and the front, so it sits only on the jack stands and then tighten up all the control arms in the front and the rear. This way I won't have to crawl under it and with the wheels on and tighten it that way. This will be, you know, more space easier. All right guys, so that is it for the lift kit. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps someone out, whoever may be installing the same kind of kit out there. So stay tuned, there's more to come, and I'll see you soon.